Hello and welcome back to Let's Go. Today's episode, we're going to be showing you how to remove the rear wheel and replace the tire, essentially. So you're going to need a few tools over the last video. So just a recap on what we had last time. To get into the battery compartment, you're going to need a three millimeter Allen key head, a Phillips head screwdriver, a small flat head screwdriver. You're also going to need some tire levers, an 18 millimeter spanner or socket. You're going to need a two and a half millimeter Allen key. Also a vise or some sort of clamp, something to protect the uh, rim as well. And you're also going to need a tire valve remover. All these tools I listed previously in the front wheel removal bar a couple that are here. So it's a little bit more involved to get the rear wheel off, but in order to do so, we have to get into the battery compartment, which you can see in my last video up here. So let's get started. Right, to get started removing the back wheel, what we want to do is actually same again as removing the front wheel. We're gonna remove these plastic stickers here and we're going to do that with a bit of heat and a flat head screwdriver. So get your trusty hairdryer and put it on a heat setting and heat the sticker until for, for a few seconds so that you can get your flat head screwdriver in. It doesn't have to be a flat head screwdriver, you can use a, uh, a knife but this is less likely to cut into it. should be hot enough, get that in there, there we go. This time instead of using a 3mm to take off the plate, what we're going to do is use a 2.5mm Allen key. And there's a little bolt in, bolt in there. This now reveals the nut to the to the rear. I'll go ahead and do the other side and then we'll uh, take these off. Right, so now the other side is done. What we need to do now is just make sure that we disconnect the battery. In our last video, we removed the battery and the controller. This time, we have to, still have to access the battery compartment to unhook all the wires for the motor to take the rear wheel off. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Also, we need to remove the cables for the motor. So we've got the three wires here that lead down into the motor. You've got brown for brown, yellow for yellow, and blue for blue. We have a rubber protective sheath here. We're just gonna take out the wires from that. and place that back in there for the time being. There is also one more cable leading into the controller. So we've got all the three phase connections removed. And now we need to remove the controller wire, which is the middle one of the three here. I'll use a little, little screwdriver to help unclip that. There we go. Now we get an 18 millimeter wrench or socket and we're just gonna crack off both sides. Just be very careful when you crack off those nuts because mine just dropped. Um, I was expecting it to stay in there. Um, so let's see if we can get the, these wires out and uh, we'll go ahead and remove the tire. In this case, I think I'm gonna just remove this uh, fender just so I don't put any more strain on the wires. And it is a two and a half millimeter Allen key head. There we go. And we'll just pop that out of the way. 
those cables out. There we go, the rear wheel is now off. So as you can see here, I've taken off the, the rear fender so that it's just one screw holding it in at that point, just so I can get the wires that are here out without damaging anything. You could probably get it out, but I don't want to take that risk. Now the wheel is off, we want to now go ahead and remove the tire. This is going to be a very similar process to the front wheel removal, apart from now you've got some um, the motor and the wires in the way. So you're going to have to be a little bit more careful on this one. So we're going to do the same procedure, we're going to remove the tire valve cover. Grab our tire removal tool and just release the air slowly. There we go, that's what happens when uh, you don't remove it slow enough. It'll just shoot out, so you've got to be prepared for that. And now we need to pop the tire off the rim. So again, we're going to get our trusty clamp here, get it over there. Protect the edge if you want to. In this case, I, I'm not going to unless I really need to. I've, I've got some protection on the uh, the metal. So the flat part of the, uh, the vice grips, I'm going to put it just about on the tire and the rim, nice and flat, and get this bit to sit inside here. And we're just going to clamp it down slowly until I can feel it sort of pop a little bit. And we need to do this all the way around the rim to get the whole tyre. So as you can see here, that's sitting flat on the metal rim there and a little bit on the tyre. And then on this side, we're just having the tyre itself. So we're going to keep going. There we go, so that's come off. Sometimes you hear it pop, sometimes you don't. Now the next bit is, I want to do that all the way around the rim, at about a quarter of the way around, just to get the whole rim popped. And then we're going to go ahead and do the other side. Well that's handy, I've done it one more time on the opposite side, and the whole thing has come away. So you can press it down nice and easy. And now it's time to do the other side. go and that is the whole wheel pops off the rim. Next thing we need to do is remove the tyre from the rim itself. As you can see I've had a little bit of uh, a chip there, not too too much problem. I will, um, I, can, I can just paint that over if I want to. Alright so we're adding a, a little bit of rim protection. Next thing we want to do is get our tool inside, grab hold of one part of the uh, with the hook, the edge of the bead, and just pop it out. Ah, there we go. We're using both tools here to just help us around. One on each side, there we go, and then you can use one just to scoop round and get the tyre off. It's a bit of a knack to it, and it's a bit weird at first, but there we go. Only a very slight bit of damage to the edge, and now we just want to pop the, uh, the wheel out. And we're just going to use the back end in there, like so, and just try it as best we can without trying to damage anything. Let me get another one in there. There 
you got a little bit more weight with the motor, so it's a bit of a pain. Okay. And that is your rear tire off your rear motor. Right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the tire, the new tire on there, and these are directional tires. So when I say directional, it means there's one way that it goes. There's a groove pattern in the tire, and that should go in a specific direction to make sure that it's pushing water out the way. One way you can see that is the way that the lines are directing water. So as you go through, it's gonna push water out through these little channels to the side to give you more grip. The other way that you're gonna notice how it's done is you've got these rotation marks on here. It will say rotation and then arrow and it's pointing that way. We want to put it back on the, on the motor the same way that it's gonna be rotating. And the easiest way to know that on this motor is where the brake is situated. So the brake is on the, the left hand side, like so. As you're riding forward, the brake's on the left, the wire's on the right, and the rotational marks should be in the same direction. So we wanna place that that way and then the tire on top. So we're gonna put this over this side, put the cable through, lay it down a little bit, and then we're just gonna push it onto the rim. You may need your tools for this, but it should just push down onto it the first way. Before we go any further, let's just make sure that the rotational marks align up properly. So the brakes on the left, wires on the right, and the channels are moving the water away from the wheel. And we've got the rotational mark there, so the wheel's gonna be spinning this way. We've got some of our trusty cable ties here. We're gonna cable tie a section of the tire, and this is gonna help clamp it down tight so we can get it over the rim. So put about four of them on. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten each one down. We'll get our wrenches and we're gonna get the flat sides and we're gonna hold this in place whilst we start it off. There we go. Next one in. Next one in. And we're gonna go around and do that for the whole wheel. There we go. So that was a bit harder than the uh, than the front wheel. There's a woo. so a couple of the cable ties broke away while I was doing that. It's uh, 
not easy when you've got this amount of mass to work with. You've got to hold it down quite strong. The brake looks fine, nothing, nothing deformed there, which is good. And now we're just going to cut this off. And now we push it down just to try and help the bead press out a bit more. Or to pop the tire valve back in. Right now here comes one of the hardest parts trying to get the air in the tire to stay in the tire. We need it to uh, to pop onto the rim and be uniform throughout. As you can see here it's uh, it's not quite on there properly so hopefully a good blast of air will get it going. Let's try the foot pump first, and if that doesn't work, we'll have to go and take it to uh, either the uh, local garage where you pump your car tires up, or we're gonna have to take it to mechanics where they, they can do it for us. But that may cost you. Welcome back, it's day two, and today we're putting the tire onto the frame. Uh, as you can see here, it's now popped onto the tire. I had to take it down to the local garage to see if they would put that on for me. Unfortunately, I struggled in-house to do that, so the local garage was helpful enough to, uh, or kind enough to, to put that, that on for me, and they did it for free they're not going to do that in a lot of cases so just be wary they might charge you so next step we're going to do is pop the fender back onto the scooter and we need a two and a half millimeter allen key Now the fender's loosely on there, what we want to do is get the wheel on the uh, on the rear here. Just make sure that you put this wire, which is the brake light wire, under here where it was originally, so it's hidden out of the way. So what we're wanting to do before we put the wheel in is make sure that these wires for the control for the uh, for the wheel are in the right place. And then we're going to go ahead and fully tighten down the fender. In this case, it'd be handy if you had two sets of hands. There you go, the fender's now on tight, and now we can pop the wheel in. Making sure that the motor wires are on the right hand side of the scooter. There's two little tabs here. One's got a little tab on it facing down along the flat line. We want to make sure that that's still facing down and that the two tabs are between the two segments. There we go. And then just push it up. Hand tighten down just so we can get a bit of a grip on it. This one's got all the gunk on it so it's not going to do that very well. So that's now on, and we will tighten that down once it's on the floor. Now it's on the floor, we can go ahead and just fully tighten it, give it a bit until it stops, and then just a little bit more. We don't want it to bend the chassis at all. And then same on the other side. We're going to get this rubber grommet, and we're going to put the cables into the respective holes. At this point we can go ahead and link up the cables again. You can't get it wrong here, there's a little pin in one and a hole in the other and they slot into each other. The last part of this is now to pop the cap back on. And once again we're going to use a 2.5mm Allen key. Just line it up, you can see in, in there there's a little hole. 
and then the sticker and there we go I'll go ahead and do the other side and we'll go ahead and wrap this video up so there we go it's uh, it's quite a tough process getting that wheel back on the front wheel when I did that popped on straight away not a problem had to get it up to a high pressure but for some reason it just it went on with the rear wheel I had to take it to a garage to uh, to get them to put some high pressure air in there luckily they didn't charge me they're very kind and thank you to that garage there is a lot of faffing about with this but it's the same with any scooter where the motor is, you, you have to get the motor off to be able to get the wheel to, to get the tire off if you don't get the t if you don't get the motor out you're gonna have a struggle playing around with everything it's just easier to take it off so that's why in the last video we did the battery first I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. There are more videos to be coming in the coming weeks. And if you do want to see those, please subscribe. Please press that bell notification so that you can see when the next video pops up. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.